Evet, Distinguished guests, I would like to welcome you all. In this presentation, we will discuss experiences in wind investments. We have three panelists from the private industry and one from the government. In a, in a two days, uh, conference uh, there are th you know that there are some repeat uh, opinions shared I mean I, I joined the session in, in, in the morning and there were very beautiful presentations tackling with the challenges of the investors the measures taken by the government I, I told yesterday that it is not uh, a one-man show and uh, and and there's there are, there are uh, political and uh, other related obstacles in the industry, and I know the private industry as well as the government have their own concerns. The government has regulatory uh, issues to handle, and it's a multi-party. Uh, 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 and and, and multi-sided uh, issue, and at times I feel like I have to stand up against this bureaucracy. And you know, sometimes when there is an investor, people think that the investor has so much money to just distribute around freely. I I I have a memory years ago there was an investor. Uh, they had this power plant investment, and then they asked for a construction license, and the construction license was as expensive as the cost of uh, investment or development plan. Today, uh, we will discuss the issues and experiences of the panelists and how can we share, solve them uh, by using our uh, consensus. Let's first listen to the private industry and then uh, say how government can respond to this. And let's start from the far left. If you introduce yourself before you speak, that would be great. I didn't want to uh, take too much of time, and I want to give the floor to Tuna Given. Tuna, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can I have this uh, pointer and the slide changer, please? I'm from Borusan, Ener Borusan uh, NBW Energy. I want to cordially welcome the guests and I salute you with respect. Uh, Borusan ENBW was founded in 2009. It's a 50-50 Turkish-German joint venture. We have 160 megawatts of installed capacity. We have three power plants. Towards the end of next year, you will have seven uh, power plants in total. Our uh, objective is to have 2,000 megawatts of installed power by the end of 2020. Our focus is renewables. And we also obtained green energy certificate only recently uh, because we pay uh, greater attention to clean energy generation uh, from renewables. Mr. Chairman, when uh, talking about investment, 
people think about construction, but I have a broader picture to introduce because our power plants are first developed and then commissioned. And a power plant has 20, 25 years of lifetime. It's development, invest, development, generation, and investment. Uh, and it's an ongoing circle, ongoing cycle. I have some solution ideas about uh, development and investment. And I also have some ideas for production, for centralized monitoring of the turbines as well. This is a summary of the regulatory framework for a 30 to 60 megawatt of wind turbine, oh, sorry, uh, wind turbine, it takes 20 to 30 months to pre-licensing. It may be as long as 36 months. In general, pre-licensing is 24 to 30 months in Turkey, and then the commissioning takes uh, 8 to 12 months. So in total, we are talking about 32 to 46 months. Once the contribution agreement is signed, the plans are commissioned. Uh, and let, let, let's have a look at the European summer, European picture. The European Wind Association performed this study. From the moment uh, this contract is signed until the first production, it takes 19 to 50 months. Yesterday, we discussed, we, we had a casual chat with Thomas Becker, and he said their average is 42 months. So in Europe, 42 months is the average time for all licensing permissions. In Germany, however, it is less than 30 months. But then there is always a conflict between the regulations and the realities. Because if the power plant is not delivered on time, the pre-license is canceled. Uh, so considering uh, in Europe it takes 30 to 42 months, uh, the Turkish developers are fall into the same range. But maybe in Turkey, uh, the government may want to update the regulations to better match the, the realities. How about the installed capacity of the countries? Anything about 4,000 megawatts, Denmark, Germany, France, Britain, Czech Republic. For them, regulatory permissions take less than 32 months. The message is, if you want to have more investment, you need, you need to cut down the pre-licensing period. And Turkey, Turkish government needs to take certain measures to, to meet this. Because there's a great connection, the direct connection between the licensing time and the installed capacity. What happens in the development? On the development side, and we are better than most of Europe, in Germany, after the first 30 months, it takes 20 months of development. This might be together with the first pre-licensing time in Turkey. Your license is pre license is for thirty months. And the commissioning time is thirty six months. That means Turkish developers commission their power plants in six to twelve months. So what are my solution suggestions? The Turkish Wind Energy Association 
can collaborate with the Dan Danish Wind Industry Association and with the German Association, <laughs> with France. I'm talking about the good examples. If, if we do a benchmark marking analysis by the experts, the duration is more or less same. But there must be things different with the mechanism. And we, need, we know that we need to adapt to the local uh, conditions. And we need a database, a software to monitor uh, the licensing. And I know the government is working on it. And if there is a cent 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 central monitoring system, that will really help things accelerate and then centralized coordination to synchronize the efforts we really add speed the emra emra is a high board but then there is energy ministry uh, then the ministry of finance ministry of environment and all these governments should be cooperating to uh, speed up the light pre-licensing. Let me talk about the generation side or the production side. Companies have financial efficiency concerns starting with the second, third year of the enterprise. They cannot project some of their costs and they cannot secure their uh, currency risk because they earn in Turkish lira but then they pay in foreign currencies. It's a big currency exposure. And then sales to PIMUM has a volatility, you know, and, it, and it's causes losses and then and then there are obligatory employment like a biologist or a or other experts Pro plant profitability should be our focus because every plant is a new entity. If we could monitor profitability of the plants and their credit payment capacities, if we can monitor this, things are a little better. Otherwise, we might have problems. And then daytime market uh, entry uh, there were some exemptions, now it is back, and then we had a pooling uh, facility, now we don't have it. So giving some of those benefits to the producers will be, an, will be a plus. And last but not the least is this centralized monitoring. As the technology advances, it becomes easier to monitor and manage the plans remotely. All uh, high power grids and their shafts can be remotely monitored and managed. Technology permits us to do that. But then the high power uh, grids are obliged, or at least by, by their convention, they employ technicians 24 by 7 at their premises. But then do we really need uh, on-site technicians because technology permits us or enables us to remotely manage a lot of facilities? And then the uh, night shifts, yes, we spend all the night on the plant, but it doesn't really add to the production. And my solution is, in Turkey, when we reach 20,000 megawatts, 
on average, every power plant is 50 megawatts or 40. That means we will have 500 megawatts. Instead of manual and local management of the power plants, I suggest a, a, a change in regulations and bring centralized monitoring. And as I said, on-site technicians are just our tradition. I understand the wind farms are or were built by the private industry before the wind farms. Uh, it was Turkish government building or developing the power plant. Tiyash in Turkey, they built a system uh, that they will they would monitor and manage everything. But, I mean, we don't have to employ someone 24 by 7 on site. So that's my opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tuna Bey. We will take the questions following our panel. We should see the general framework first and the general questions first. In the slides that you showed, the average period you gave them, but they're not certain yet, right? They're average numbers. In Turkey, we have 87 facilities, and we have many extreme cases. And the statistics I gave about Europe, their deviation is lower. We got 10 facilities from each country, but it's reflecting the average. In Turkey, we have very short period examples and very long period examples. There is a facility which cannot be completed within 10 years, but there are also some facilities which have been completed in 20 months. We should accept that fact. This depends on the location and the project. When you say that everything is going well, the project can be completed in a very short period of time. In November, for example, I know a wind plant which was completed in a very short period of time. But there are also some projects which are still going on in the last 10 years, but it's not resulting from the investor or the government, there are some facilities which cannot be completed because of some problems. While giving out these reference periods, we kept them very short. As you all know, for the first wind plans, we put some benchmarking points. In the shortest period of time, and for the efficient, for the most efficient facilities, we are planning to give the licenses. You know, there were some petitions alleging that they would be completing the project within 12 months. We gave a period of 56 months. It was sent to the court and it came back from the court. So we can have such problems in terms of the time duration of completion of the projects. Now we will proceed with our second speaker the general manager of Boydak Energy, Gültekin Bey. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I would like to thank to all the participants and my deep respects to you all. You're here and you're listening to us. First of all, I would like to give you brief information about Boydak Energy Group. Following that, I will be telling you about our experiences in the process of investment. First of all, as Boydak Energy, next slide, please. I would like to talk about Boydak Energy portfolio. We have a total of 428 megawatts and 23, 20, 
225 megawatt of which is constituted by the thermal plant and 47% of which is constituted by hydroelectrical power plant. And in the portfolio, we started to buy the authorizations, and now we have an installed power of 248 megawatt. In terms of investment value, as stated by Tuna Bay, development plan approval is very important, and also view and authorizations taken for the development plan, then I will be talking about investment process. Before proceeding with these two items, I would like to tell a couple of words about the wind power sector. In the past, we used to have problem about Rapsin. Following that, we have a prime ministry circular and there were some delays in our processes. Following that, Forestry General Directorate Risk General Evaluation Report was announced, and with its implementation, it prolonged the process, and it ended up in delays. And following that, we had a process of 2nd of August, and some meteorological radars, some new items were put on the agenda, or they are about to come on the agenda. In order to solve a problem, what matters the most is to find the rooted reason of that problem. When we look at the problems, the problems are changing their dimensions. We were saying the same thing, thing in the morning session as well. In order to solve the problems, we should find the underlying reason. Yes, we are learning both as private and public sector, but as of 2007, it has been seven, seven years already. We have to clarify some points. We have to complete our learning process. And the probable changes should be forecasted, and the new license takers and the new projects should be uh, supported by our experiences, you know. For an ongoing project, when we say that, okay, we want this change, I will also give you some examples of that. It is prolonging the investment process automatically. You know, some payments have been made, the products have already been delivered, but the process cannot go forward because of these changes. Therefore, we it's high time that we completed this learning process and we should process we should uh, go forward with the development plan as all the investors know the most critical phase of this process is the approval of the development plan i would like to share with you with my my experience about 4 years ago we used to get the approval of 13 14 authorities in our last project we used to get the opinions of 22 authorities and in our last project we needed to get the opinions and approvals of 34 authorities and when we look at the the approval period required from each authority, you can see that. Here, the aim is to understand the approval period of each authority. Statistically, in the first six months, 70% of the authorities gave their approvals and opinions to the Ministry of uh, Urban and uh, Urbanizing and Urban Planning. And depending on the location, the times get, get longer if there is a cultural asset of or natural asset or airport, the conditions change. So it's a fact that the minimum amount of time required to complete the documents is 13 months. 
under strict follow-up, by the way. I can tell you that even if you work so hard, the completion of the development plan approvals takes 13 months. Of course, there's something to consider here while determining the total period. Three, four months are required to present the draft of the development plan, preparing the maps, for example. If they're not, if the area is not located in the maps already, then it takes even longer, which is eight, nine months, four, six months for preparation. The substrates are prepared, then 13 months to get the approvals. Following the approvals of the authorities, the Ministry of Environment and Urban Planning, it takes them to approve the project like four, six months. If it is approved, in the Ministry of Forestry, you're supposed to wait for like three, four months. When you add them all, we're talking about a process of 22 months to get the development plan. When we look at the numbers given by Tuna Bay, the periods are um, overlapping. This is our own experience. The preparation period took about 22 months. In the first four months, the maps and the development plan drafts are being prepared, and 18 months is the time required to complete all the authorization from the responsible authorities. While managing this process, we preferred the simultaneous process management system. While taking the authorization, we also started our meetings with the turbine purchase companies, for example. Therefore, all the technical uh, works were also opted for complete, uh, completing before uh, the authorizations are being taken. As stated by our chairman, this is a process in which we didn't have too many of problems. Following the authorizations and licenses, we can go into the area and we can start the construction work. And it takes about 10 months. It might sound a little bit long for our investors, but the reason why this period is so long, while the process is going on, race evaluation report was demanded from all the investors, from all the investors. And this report was asked to be prepared. And this report is a, a very big report. The ornithology report has to be included. Some observations have to be completed in the field. And the preparation, presentation, and approval of this report takes about six months. Let's imagine that we complete the procurement process and we partially started the construction process, we were face to face preparing such a big report. And I would like to take this opportunity to tell you that, yes, we are going through a learning process. We have new demands and new needs, but the needs that are arising within this process should not be applicable for the ongoing or already completed projects. This has a very negative impact on the already or ongoing, already finished or ongoing projects. If you are to go back to the construction process, yes, in the construction and the fixture process, we opted for simultaneous process management and we completed our technical construction works and for the five megawatt project was completed in 35 months. 
I would like to take your attention to the energy transmission line while taking the process simultaneous two processes simultaneously we took the uh, authorization and the also it takes like 18 months and we have some recommendations in this regard in the past the time period given for the, uh, for the construction is 22 months. I would like to underline effect in this regard. Before the code 6446, before taking the pre-licensing, the time period given to the companies before the construction was 22 months. Now they had an additional of six months following 6446 code pre-licensing period and the pre-construction period when you compare two processes they're more or less the same you know there is a big uh, difference between two processes it's very clear that this amount of time is not enough and in the new board decision for the projects between 5 to 50 megawatt projects and for the pro it's 30 months and for the projects more than 50 megawatt it is 36 months we can say that these periods of time uh, are quite long when compared to foreign examples but when you look at the subject as a whole The institution's approach for the wind sector and their experience accumulation takes time. In the in a couple in the last couple of days, we had the process of second of May. Many projects before second of May took 22 months. Then they get they got six months additionally as a proposal of solution, these time periods are strictly controlled. They should be regarded as force measure. We shared our statistics a minute ago. 70-80% institution opinions can be got very easily by the investors and they can be taken very easily. And then there are there is one or two remaining, and I believe if we can have an analysis of Turkey, we will know it better. And once we clarify, we can also ask opinion from Emra, from the Renewable Energy Directorate, from the from the Ministry as well. And I and I want to thank them for their support. That's my uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Ben de Gültekin Bey'e teşekkür ediyorum. Tabii yatırım yapmak hakikaten meşakkatli bir iş. Well, thank you very much for this presentation. And I, and I want to con congratulate you for uh, for your commitment. You are doing wonders. And, and we want to thank you uh, as the government. And, and we know your commitment was proven right and because uh, you, uh, because I mean uh, with, with the way you suggested we can uh, decrease the burden of finance on the government and we can also better secure the demand but I wish you best of luck and I thank you for your commitment I want to give the floor to the third colleague and it seems like he also has problems he said uh, one of his power plants was operational for the last three years, and he has problems there, and he's he's not in the good mood. But I mean, there there are problems in business life. Don't don't worry about it. And maybe it will be a good uh, case study for the others. That I mean, you need to be cautious. Kenan uh, is the is the third pre presenter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And yes, we have a less. We have, we learned our lesson. My my name is Kenan Haifavi. I am from Gamma uh, Energy. 
I am uh, assistant uh, general manager for renewables. Gamma operates in a number of renewables. Uh, we have uh, investments in Turkey and outside Turkey. And we mainly have pow uh, wind power. Uh, and we have an installed capacity of uh, hundred and of, over 100 megawatts. 60 of them is uh, commissioned, 45 per me megawatts are in construction, and the remaining bit is on, a, on the pre-licensing phase. Now, Turkey is a developing country. The population is growing, so as the energy dem demand is rising rapidly. And in Turkey, the demand increases by five and a half percent. To meet this energy demand, there's a number of things to do, as outlined by many speakers since yesterday. We need uh, planning. Uh, we need. Uh, uh, we also need to accelerate the processes. In Turkey, hydropower and wind power uh, plants are commissioned faster. Then we have solar panels, we have biomass, and we have other alternatives. But hydraulics and wind are uh, have a greater focus. Focus on renewables is also part of reducing uh, ex import dependency of Turkey. How about installed, capa installed capacity? Uh, we've been discussing this since yesterday, but I, I'm, I'm moving ahead. Total, total installed capacity is 68,000 megawatts, which is a very good score comparing considering the last 10 years growth. In 10 years, Turkish installed capacity grew by 100%. Wind is 5% of total national capacity at the moment. In Turkey, there's, there's a trend in, in wind uh, our annual growth rate is 500 megawatts, and the total installed capacity is around three and a half gigawatts. Well, that's good, but why not build 1,000 megawatts a year? Last year, for for instance, was remarkable. We had 700 megawatts, and by the end of the year, correct me if I'm wrong, we had this forest uh, problems. If we didn't have that, the, the forestry issues, we could easily hit one gigawatt last year. We, that's, that's a good score for Turkey. Compared to Europe with 500 megawatts of growth rate annually, Turkey uh, uh, ranks in the top 10. which uh, helps Turkey appear as, a, as, a, as an attractive market. How about the investment uh, process? Other investors already mentioned it's a long and challenging path. It starts with your application, then pre-licensing, licensing, development and commissioning. And until commissioning, for application, you need uh, to perform measuring for a year. That's a long process. With the latest changes in the law, pre-licensing was brought up, which brought us in par with the European standards. Because before, uh, people had licenses, 
then we were asking, why don't you start developing? And why couldn't you f f f finance it? Because licensing was the point to start. Pre-licensing was good, because with pre-licensing, we start with all the finances and everything, and the moment we have the license, I mean, we are ready to go. Applications take a year when you have to install your wind masts, do your measures, measurements, and then submit your application. There are certain pre-qualification terms. EMRA identifies them and assesses them about the site's location and everything. Then there is an auction. And if we win the auction, government gives us a pre-license. Then we start licensing procedures. It's about right of ownership. It could be a forest. It could be a private property, treasury owned. And, and each land has its own rules. Investors in this room know how what to do and how, and we all know that it's a long path. Everyone says that. Preliminary project approval. The minister has a standard. If you follow the, follow the book, your preliminary approval is granted. Then there is connectivity agreement. Then there is radar and the army. And that could be Teyash, that could be civil aviation, or even uh, chief of staff uh, office. Then there is the AIS, uh, the environmental impact study. Then we start with licensing. Licensing is like you are, you can drive your car. It's like giving you a driving license that you that you are then enabled to manage it. This is my timeline, starting with application. It's a, it's a six years process. There's a one year for wind mast and measurements. Then there's an auction or a contest and pre-sales. Then there is licensing. You don't, you don't have the luxury to, to complete in a year. Usually it takes more longer than two years. Financing, development for 50 megawatts, it takes you one year to commission. That's our experience. So in total, we are talking about six years until you can start generating power. Well, there are specific cases where it only took 20 months. And I agree. February 2013, we licensed the project. In 2014, June, we commissioned. It took us two and a half years, including all licensing. And we were lucky to get to obtain our license in the forest. That was before the licensing crisis, but but again, it was a total. The total duration was six and a half years. So this is not something you can do overnight. It's a challenging path that you need to invest time and funds. Tiash announced. Uh, 12,000 megawatts of license capacity. That's the government's goal. That means Teyash needs to license an additional 8,000 megawatts. But we need a schedule, a regular licensing plan, so that investors can plan themselves too, considering all the requirements. Then we have some, there are some subsidies in Turkey. Uh, government gives you incentives about investment, system utilization capacity, uh, fees and duties. One percent of the treasury's contribution is not paid. There's a feed-in tariff. You can use the feed-in tariff. It is 7.3 plus local contribution. That means it 
that was that was a f tariff for a long term, but no one used it. The feed-in tariff was there, but no one used it. But now, with the additional local contribution, sh it becomes interesting. For for the forest, there is a ten-year time frame. And I believe all the investors have this question. In in 2005, they give us 50 percent of uh, certain concession rights, and now it is 85 percent. Concessions in in the forest was a burden, burden, and they reduced the concession fees. But now the government increase the concession fees by five times they are they are charging more reforestation fees or other fees and it's a big risk and disadvantage for the investors to come across with additional fees and tariff feed in, feed in tariff was not there when we first incorporated I'm not sure who uses feed-in tariff in Turkey. But I know that uh, in 2013, only three wind farms uh, used this feed-in tariff. But in, to in 2014, uh, there, is, there, is, there are 21 wind farms. They use feed-in tariff and the added local contribution fee, and, they, and, and they're happy with that still. They use it. Financing, all, this, all these uh, burdens impair the finances. When we started, the assessment threshold was P50, P51. Now it is P90. And those who want to invest, that's an additional margin. Investment costs are reduced. Advances in technology, reduction of the turbine prices are important. And then local contribution. That is important. And that helps. And, and that's a tender. You, everyone uh, wants to win. Everyone has their own parameters, but as Mr. Chairman said in his presentation, there are, and sometimes certain rules uh, just prevent you from investing. You have your license, you are, but, but you can never build, because there are certain rules that some companies can never meet. In conclusion, until 2023, Turkey aims to b develop 20,000 megawatts. That, that is a challenging uh, goal. But if investors are empowered, if licensing becomes easier, I wouldn't say easier, but I wouldn't say we, we I mean, we just don't need the government to reinvent things. For example, two years ago, we, we commissioned a power plant. There was a number of adjustments and regulations and changes. Investors are quick to adapt. All we need is visibility. If government gives us a visible pathway, we can find it even, even in dark. Our only request is don't change the rules of the game once we start our invest investments because government keeps changing the rules and that's the biggest problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sometimes public has some demands, sometimes investors have some demands and the government is making arrangements accordingly. Some, some fall into the flame and some don't. Of course, we are all together in this business. It's not possible to be excellent. Of course, everyone wants to be perfect, but you're tailoring 
address. Sometimes uh, you put the head inside and sometimes the arm is left outside. It's not possible to catch the excellence. There are some things that we learn by living. I have been in this sector for the last 32, 33 years and I spent my last 14 years in EMRA. I worked on the legislation and we really tried very hard and we worked day and night to do the necessary arrangements in the legislation and a live market, a dynamic market which needs changes day by day is difficult. In wind connections, for example, we didn't want some certain points. And as the turbine technology improved, Teash, for example, they said that they can't set up more than 1,500 megawatts. Nowadays, we are talking about 1,500, 2,000, uh, and the technology is developing very fast, and there were some harm to given to the grid as well. In daily market, the forecasts will be able to be done on a daily basis, as stated by Kenan Bay, some incentives were uttered. The incentives used to be a financing guarantee, not a profit guarantee, and it was needed. It wasn't profitable that much, but it was needed. We were always criticized. Solar power, for example, you can't install that with 30, 13 cents. Even we, there are some companies, they said that give me some solar power and I can install that, even with 10 cents. It was an important time frame when the exchange rate was 1,900, it was okay, but when it exceed, exceeds 1,900, then it was close to 100. Maybe all of the winds or the hydraulic power plants, they will make use of Yektam. Of course, it's not in our hands. There are some outside events than the market conditions. After thanking Kenan Bey for sharing his experiences in the market, we have Argun, a friend Argun. We worked together with him, and he really worked really very hard in the sector, and he's very conscious about the sector. I'm older from him. People used to find us to find solution to their problems. Ergun Bey is with us now. We really experienced many things together. 500 megawatt private sector plant, they finished the facility and with the court decision, uh, it was decided to shut down the facility as the ministry. We sent a delegation and we prepared a report and we saved that facility. We can have such experiences in Turkey. Okay, now I would like to give the floor to the public side. Let's listen to them. Then we would like to listen to your problems. I would like to allocate more time for the Q&A session. Maybe you have some other problems, and in the Q&A session, we will take your questions. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Let, let, me, let, me, let me summarize the process. And, and let me uh, give you a more a, a clear opinion about what the government intends to do. I want to thank other presenters for summarizing Turkish government's objects for the next 10 years. 
In ten, ten years from now, our, our production will uh, will increase a lot, and Turkish government is expecting to invest another 120 billion dollars. Uh, I mean, and the stakeholders include not only investors but the local people, the government entities, uh, the farmers, even the environment, the birds, and everything. And and they need to get permissions from more than third. The investors are asked to get permissions from 34 entities. And I know it. I mean, look at this. I mean, it is such a complicated process. This is what it takes to get a permission. For wind investments, you know, you need, we need uh, to ask for wind measurements for one year. After the first wind measurements for one year, there is a pre-licensing and certain documents. Then there is licensing. And then there are documents that uh, investors are expected to submit for licensing. And once you get your license, it comes, we start with contracting. Uh, the investor is uh, is required to bring a secure financing to get back their investment. But everything starts with measuring the wind. As per our current regulations, you don't need to find an accredited wind measurement company. You don't need to be accredited. If the government office permits, any company can do it. For example, in Turkey, there are, now there are more than 1,000 companies claiming to measure the wind. That's how it started. I understand it's not just to change the rules of the game while you are playing it. But then it's not always us. It's sometimes the banks, the financiers are asking for additional things. Like uh, some of the financiers are asking for accredited measuring measurement companies and my humble opinion is uh, the, pr the, the the produce the, the producers uh, the lenders the investors and I understand everyone uh, cares for their own best interest government uh, Turkish government wants to secure the future demand for energy. We care for our people's lives. We also uh, care for the health and hygiene. But then some of the criteria are changed by the lenders, by the financiers. Like the quality of, of a wind farm is important for the financial institutions, and, and the measurement is important for them because the financiers are committing serious amount of money. I mean, one turbine uh, is uh, so much money that, I mean, it's, it's a huge investment. So we want to encourage all the stakeholders uh, to be open and to cooperate. All stake, we want to encourage all stakeholders to cooperate and help us uh, simplify the processes. I know it is complicated now, but for the next phase, I believe we need to require accredited measurement companies. But accredited companies should also be assumed as accredited by the banks. And once everything is done, you start with project approval, development, and commissioning. As stated by our previous speaker, it requires 34 approvals and authorizations. All the authorizations are mean approvals, but of course, there is a risk of rejection. Therefore, for each authorization, 90%, 95%, some 10% of rejection if we
calculate that as 90 percent coefficient 34 0 0.9 the figure is quite low therefore the result of the authorization when we look at the power plants then the number gives us the average number how can we increase that 90 percent average up to 99 percent or 10 percent up to 55 percent this should be the base i mean while the in investor starts the process the uncertainties within the process should be a little bit higher therefore there are some efforts given by the Renewable Energy Association about the licensing and authorization. For some regions, we have to announce red zones. There is the circular of the Ministry of Forestry. This circle wasn't welcomed by us, but at least in order not to affect the investors negatively before the circular. And on the other hand, the scope of the circular, Istanbul, Izmit, Çanakkale, Sakarya, as they have high wind power capacity. Now we have 1,346 measurements are not being conducted. It should have been proclaimed beforehand and also the other authorizations as well. Another subject that's worth mentioning is the regulation of the 17th and 18th article of the forestry, code on forestry. For the betterment of the investment environment under the coordination of the prime ministry, all the institutions have some responsibilities on their shoulders. They're going fast. Now the project's cancelled. Now the project approval transactions. I would like to give you some information about my department. Project approval and acceptance processes for the electrical uh, facilities project approval means that we take, we assume the responsibility of these facilities and it puts a lot of burden on the shoulders of the public and on the private sector side at the project process, preparing the documents and procuring the materials for each project separately, you know, it's quite difficult, even if there isn't any complaint about that. In the past, we approved 600, 700 projects. The as the number of investors entering into sector increase, uh, entering into sector increases. In order not to have any problem in that regard, we made some amendments in our regulation. We drafted that and we sent it to the Prime Ministry to be announced and published. And in our new regulation, we classified the approvals according to the turbine types from the manufacturers depending on the turbine types and I convest us G are among the companies manufacturing companies We will be approving the turbines on the basis of the models. We don't want to create more obstacles. Therefore, these manufacturers in their own countries, we know that they have accreditations. Therefore, the projects which have already been approved by the accredited authorities we are confirming with the accreditation documents and we are publishing them on the internet page of our ministry. Therefore, you know, we are not requiring the documents again and again. The tensile calculations, the statistical uh, burden uh, calculations, we are not going to ask, ask for them and we will accept the verification of the accreditation authorities because 
most of the accreditation uh, agencies abroad were also accepted by our Turkak, Turkish Quality Accreditation Agency. Accreditation document is given after many thorough checks and wind turbines. They cannot be completed at once. They, for example, install 10 megawatt first, then they put two more turbines a couple of months later. Therefore, this system is not sustainable for us. And in within the scope of type approval system, we want this system to be feasible in Turkey as well. And we are planning to shorten the process by accepting these accreditation documents, which were already taken by the manufacturers. And in cooperation with the general director of forestry and the highways, type road projects and the control check headquarters, we will develop some projects and the investors will have less responsibility to prepare the documents. Thank you very much. That's all. Let me tell you a story. Before 2001, we had a regulation of approval of electricity installations. There were temporary approval and permanent approval. There were two types of approvals in the past. You're doing something on behalf of the state, then you're accepting, temp you're approving it temporarily, then the missing points are being completed, then the permanent approval is being given. In the private sector, of course, this cannot be the case. Now, the process is very easy. Some risks are already accepted. Our purpose, our only purpose, especially in domestic manufacturing, even one second is important, and we try to save that. Even if you put it on operation one second before, then it is profit for the country, it's profit for the investor. All the investment that you're making is public investment. Therefore, within all of these challenges, I would like to say that the country is proud of these investors because this can be accepted as public investment. Thank you very much, our distinguished speakers. If you have any questions, we would be more than happy to answer. Do you have any questions? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Ahmed Bey, for this uh, opportunity. Uh, we are working since 20 years uh, in wind energy. My name is Manam. And uh, since 10 years, we are following the Turkish market. And we are focused in these days on a specific problem of the Turkish grid code and calls it energy generation. Uh, we are trying to solve this with a battery storage system. And uh, the problem is as follows. Uh, we have studied several grid codes worldwide uh, in Europe and also in China. And uh, in Germany, for example, you are allowed to inject as much uh, wind energy produced by your turbine as the wind is coming to the turbine. No any limits. Yeah, because we are very strong grid in Germany. Problem yok, as we say in Turkish. In China, there is a 10% limit per minute what you are allowed to vary in your wind energy generation at the turbine which is already a strict rule. Yeah? This gives you not the freedom to transform all wind, what is coming to the turbine, into electricity. Yeah? And in Turkey, the grid code, Ahmed Bey may confirm, and also we will see how can it possibly be developed, is 5%. So you are only allowed, when you are producing now, one minute later, 5% more energy generation. But the wind supply is different. We get, after one minute, maybe 20% more energy in the wind, but the turbine is limited according to the Turkish grid code. Yeah? This is something what you don't take into account 
during your wind measurements, during your energy generation, but what you are seeing in practice with a lower production than assumed before or even don't remark it because you are not measuring it. Because the turbine is already pitching at the point where the wind is jumping up and it's not transforming this into electricity. So I want to ask the reputable uh, operators of the wind uh, farms, did you take this situation into account or is it are you open to work on some solution on this field? And about uh, Ahmed Bay, uh, I heard there's some uh, working groups also on the grid code. Is there any developments or you, how you see the situation? Of course, we understand due to the weak grid and the high targets in the renewable energy, you cannot allow unlimited injection into the grid. This is necessary demand. But it's a problem and as we are together here to talk about problems, we want to address this and uh, discuss with you. And if anybody has remarked already the situation, we will be uh, pleased uh, to share with you information because I think it's a serious problem and we are talking about 10, 20% of the energy generation of the turbines. Dr. Shigala. I think this was a recommendation, not a question. I would like to thank to all the speakers. I think everything is fine. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. I adjourn the session.